for this and the Holy Spirit, one God, and then may the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, grace, mercy, and wisdom now and unto the age of uh, Today, as many of you already know, is the Feast of the Holy Virgin St. Mary. Um, but there's also, uh, the Gospel, if you notice, is slightly related because it's the closest Sunday to the Feast, but um, it's the Gospel of the thir third Sunday of Misra. And also, you may know we just celebrated the glorious feast of the Holy Transfiguration a few days ago. Um, <clears throat> and so, uh, even though the, the, there's some variation in the different themes that we celebrate, we'll try to kind of compile all of these uh, celebrations um, into one uh, talk leading to this. Um, and if some people ask, well, why didn't the gospel change? or today for the Feast of St. Mary? I don't know the answer. Because that's typically what we do on the Feasts of the Lord. Like if the Feast of the Holy Transfiguration falls on Sunday, we read not the, this Gospel, but the Gospel of the Transfiguration. Why didn't we do it today? Because we only do that for the Lordly Feasts, right? For the seven major and the seven minor. Um, <clears throat> but although St. Mary is the highest of all the saints, we don't change the reading um, because it fell on a Sunday um, today. <clears throat> so, but despite that, the reading is related to St. Mary because most of the time the feast falls in the middle of the week. And so at the end, we hear what the Lord explaining, whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Um, and we'll contemplate a little bit about that verse uh, in a minute. <clears throat> You know that the Holy Virgin has a very high place in, in, in the church and in the eyes of the Lord. And uh, there are many symbols and types and analogies that, that, that are used for her. And most of them can also be used for what? You don't know? The church. Um, and this is not an accident. Um, <clears throat> like we call her the bride of Christ, the true tabernacle, the ark. Of the, of the testimony, the golden vessel. All of these things can actually be symbolic, not only for her, but for the church at large. And as we'll see, similarly, the more we become like her, the more we become like Christ, the more also we become a little church <clears throat> because we carry God in our hearts, just like she bore the Lord for nine months. And... Uh, in the same instance, we call God the, the source of light, um, for God is light, right? And uh, when he revealed his glory on Mount Tabor to his holy disciples, uh, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And that's probably one reason also why we call St. Mary the mother of the true light. Uh, and... In the book of Revelation, I think I've mentioned this before, in chapter 12, we see a woman clothed with the sun. How could someone be clothed with the sun? Um, of course, many things in Scripture, especially in the book of Revelation, is symbolic. Um, but this is, again, in reference to both the church and the Holy Virgin Mary. <clears throat> um, and we also, as uh, St. Paul says, um, are called to be the light of the world, as the Lord has mentioned as well. Um, we shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of God. Um, <clears throat> but sometimes we don't shine. We don't shine as much as we should. And I think the best analogy, or one good analogy to explain this, is like a lantern, right? So lantern, you, you place... A candle or a light inside right and it gives light to the whole place um, but if the glass around it is muddy or dirty or very dark it won't shine right <clears throat> so we are this lantern and our job is to clean the glass so that the light of God may shine through us and from within us <clears throat> And St. Mary had the cleanest glass of all, um, very clear, um, clearly said, and that's why we refer, 
revere her so much. And that's why the Lord chose her to begin with. Um, <clears throat> and that's why the Lord said today, whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. And as St. Paul says also um, in, in uh, the, his epistle of today, uh, he says in Romans 16, 19, for your obedience has become known to all, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And if so, the God of, of peace will crush Satan under your feet speedily. Um, and again, going back to Revelation 12, that's what happened um, to, to the woman that was clothed with the sun. The Satan, had, Satan had no power, or the beast had no power over her. <clears throat> uh, so we say that St. Mary is the greatest of all saints. Say, okay, what book in the Bible did she write? Not one, right? She didn't even write any book, actually, right? As, as far as we know. Which church did she start? Not one, but thousands and thousands of church churches have been named after her. What was the greatest accomplishment that she, that she physically did? Simply, as we know, she submitted to the Lord so he could work through her and in her. She cleaned the glass as best as she could by the grace of God so that the glory of God and the light of Christ shine within. And she became, as we know, the mother of God. Um, this phrase should not be glanced over as, as we probably do because it's mentioned so much in our church. Um, and within these three words, mother of God, um, or even in the Coptic, it's actually one combined word, tima isnoti, um, <clears throat> or theotokos in, in the Greek. It reveals many things. Like first of all, and the most important of all is uh, that has to do with Christ, how he took flesh, how God took flesh and not just appeared as a man, um, like maybe the angels did in the Old Testament, like Archangel Raphael did, for example, but he became man and took flesh. It's completely different um, when God appeared as, as a dove, for example, um, with the Holy Spirit, and when the Lord Jesus Christ took flesh. Um, <clears throat> so, so calling her the mother of God reveals that the Lord Jesus Christ is truly God of God before all ages. Um, because, as you may know, in the Third Council, um, the Nestorius and the heretics, they tried to say that, no, let's just call her the mother of Christ or the mother of man. Um, but the church emphasized the fact that, no, Jesus Christ is God. But when was he God? The, the, after he, she gave birth to him? Of course not. From the beginning of all time, the logos of God. <clears throat> and so that's why this, the, it's only actually one reason why we call her, her this. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so this title is, is in reference to Christ and the, our understanding of who the Lord Jesus Christ is. Um, the Holy Fathers refer to St. Mary also as the bridal chamber in which the union between the divinity and the humanity happen. Um, <clears throat> again, there's many um, theological debates about this and unfortunately, many churches have split based on this topic and their misunderstanding of what other churches uh, said, including ourselves. But the important thing is, is that we know, we know that the Lord God took flesh from the Holy Virgin in, uh, before um, she gave birth to him. Um, and there was never a time where he was not God or that uh, that. Jesus became God at a later point in time. That completely goes against the Orthodox understanding. Um, and why is this important? Saint Irenaeus says, um, if you can't understand the, comp if you can't comprehend the incarnation, um, you can't comprehend the Eucharist. If you can't understand how the uh, the Lord God took flesh and became man, you can't understand also how the bread becomes the body and, uh, 
and God comes to man. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is important because all of this happened where in the Holy Virgin, the womb of the Holy Virgin. Uh, and what does this have to do with us? Because to a lesser degree, of course, the same work that God does in his saints, he does in us, or he can do in us, um, <clears throat> if we shine the glass. Um, and so the question is, am I letting God work in me? Um, that might be the best thing that you ever do in your life. Um, like we said, St. Mary didn't have a very amazing resume um, before it was revealed who she was and what she had done. But if you were to look at her CV, what would you say? Who is this person? <laughs> um, uh, but, so, so that's the thing. We shouldn't judge ourselves and judge others based on what's on paper, um, but the way God sees and the way God is working in, in that person. So what should I, I do personally? We should focus on ourselves, focus on our, on our spiritual life and our relationship with God, how much the glass is being cleaned and how much the light is reflecting the glory of God. Don't belittle the importance of your spiritual growth because that is, the, at, at the last day, that's the only thing that really matters is your relationship with God, your state of sin, and his forgiveness, and the grace that he has bestowed upon you, dependent upon your submission to him and his, your allowance of him working in you while you were in the flesh. Um, <clears throat> so if we let God's word take flesh in us, then we can accomplish his will, and we, we may become his child. Um, and... St. Augustine says something very unique. It's like, not only do we become children of God, but also mothers. Even that applies to the, the, the verse of today. Um, the Lord says, they will, if you do the will of God, you become my mother, sorry, my brother, my sister, and mother. Mother, yes. St. Augustine says, um, yes. It's possible to be the mothers of Christ. And he says, let us dare to call ourselves mothers of Christ. You are members of Christ. Who gave birth to you? He says, I hear the voice of your hearts answering the mother church. The members of Christ give birth. Therefore, the spirit, just as the Virgin Mary gave birth to Christ in her womb, in this way, you will be mothers of Christ. This is not something that is out of your reach. It is not beyond you, and it is not incompatible with you. You have become children be mothers as well. So the idea here is once we are rooted uh, somewhat firmly in our faith, our role is to help uh, others experience or taste that joy as well. Um, and that's how the Christian becomes a servant. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this is the objective of, of all of us. And that's why we consider St. Mary to be the mother of all of us, not only because she took flesh, but she exemplified the, 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 the life of the, the ideal Christian. Um, <clears throat> and she didn't speak, she spoke very little. And when she, when she did, it was extremely important and extremely timely and, and very much to the point. <clears throat> and sometimes even the, the holy apostles um, spoke when they shouldn't have. Like, for example, on the Mount of Transfiguration, who, who spoke? God the Father spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And who else was speaking if you listen to his eminence's uh, contemplation on this? Hmm? Before St. Peter spoke, Moses and Elijah were speaking with the Lord Jesus Christ about the suffering about the cross. Um, we'll see, didn't they speak enough when they were in, in the flesh and, and the books of the Old Testament reveal what they had uh, seen and spoken about and written? Um, <clears throat> and then after that, Simon Peter decides to speak, but he, he, what he said you know, had, no, had no bearing um, whatsoever. So sometimes we need to listen more than speak. 
Um, and even after they saw the, the vision, did they speak of the vision? They were commanded not to speak until after, until after the crucifixion and the resurrection. So this is a great lesson that we learned from the Holy Virgin is to know, as Ecclesiastes says, when to speak and when to keep silent. Um, if we keep silent, most of the time, we'll be able to focus on cleaning the glass. Um, and this is the purity and the holiness that uh, converts others. So as St. Peter says for, for today, without a word, when he's speaking about the holy and righteous women, um, and the, the, he gives some direction to the wives um, in the church, he says, without a word, they, they may win um, their, their husbands by their conduct when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. Of course, this applies to all of us. Sometimes we don't have a ch chance to speak, um, but more importantly, we have to live the holy life. And just by doing that, others may be converted when they observe our holy conduct. <clears throat> um, and we'll con conclude simply with, again, the words of St. Augustine, where he talks about how the, the Holy Virgin gives us an example of our spiritual growth. He says, uh, his mother carried him in her womb. May we carry him in our hearts. The Virgin Mary became pregnant with the incarnation of Christ. May our hearts become pregnant with faith in Christ. She brought forth the Savior. May our souls bring forth salvation and praise. May our souls not be sterile, but fertile for God. Glory be to him now and forever to each other. We exalt.